my dear student, loving welcome to English language classroom. This is session seven. Today, let us begin with a very noble thought. I'm sure all of you love to shine like sun, don't you? So let us read it, a quote by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. If you want to shine like a sun, first burn like a sun. So from this, what do we understand? Yes, that is, there is no substitute for hard work. Keep working hard. I want you to uh, watch and listen to the videos which we are sending completely till the end. Don't stop halfway. Take down the notes. Study. And imbibe the lessons. All right. As usual, let us go to Cambridge English Language Quiz. C-E-L-Q. Today I am giving you an exercise related to music. All of us love music, right? Music has great healing effect. And these are the idioms related to music. Let us read the question first. Choose the appropriate idioms from brackets and complete the following. I'm giving you 11 idioms. There are 10 questions here, 10 sentences here. You have to complete the sentences using the related, the idioms uh, related to music appropriately. So are you all ready with your pen and book? Start writing. Pause the video and start writing. All right. I hope all of you have written your answers. Let's go to the answer slide. Yes. The first one is, he made a big mistake, but he can't still face the music. See, what is the meaning of this? Face the music. Here it means, accept punishment for something. Face the music means that. Next one, I need some glue, paper, string and all the jazz to make a kite. Here, all the jazz means things like that and things like that. This paper, glue, paper, string, etc. Next one, depending on the weather, we will play it by your. So we are not sure of the weather. All right. So what is the meaning of that? Play it by your mean. Decide what to do according to the way something develops without making exact plans. Right? We don't know whether the when the when the weather changes. All right. Next, let's uh, let's go to the next question. After this try, will the president change his tune on taxes? So there's a doubt about it. What's the meaning of that? Change his tune. Change one's ideas or start thinking in a different way after something has happened. All right. Fifth question. People spent, Peter spent the whole evening blowing his own trumpet. This idiom is so familiar, right, to all of us. What's the meaning of that? Talk a lot about your own achievements, right? So that is what it means. It's not right to do that. Next one. In his job, Peter was able to call the tune. Oh, really? That's good. What's the meaning of call the tune? Be in a position of authority to give orders and make decisions. So he is in such a position. Next one. Seventh one. She made a song and dance about her aching feet. But it was nothing important. Hmm. Sometimes we all do that, right? Yes, what's the meaning of that? Behave as if it was worse or more important than it really is. Next one. He bought his house for a song two years ago. For a song means very cheaply. Next one, I fixed the radio, so now all the stations come in, as, come in clear as a bell. It means very clear it is. Next one, 
his words were music to her ears it means exactly what one wants to hear yes all right let's go to the main segment in which we are going to discuss um linking words of contrast this is transformation of sentences lesson 4 so i'm sure all of you are familiar with this that is the linking words of contrast are though although even though in spite of despite so these are the linking words of contrast i hope you know the meaning of contrast so do although even though you always ask what is the difference between these three actually we always use it interchangeably right the only difference is although is the base word though is the shortened one which is usually used in speech than in writing and it is not wrong in using in writing we can definitely use it in writing also and even though is a stronger word which gives emphasis to what we are telling but all the three means the same now and in spite of and despite are prepositional expressions which have the meaning similar meaning to although and even though all right they also express a contrast between two things but only thing is they are both that is in spite of and despite are more common in writing than in speaking usually we don't use it in speaking right we mostly we use though only because it's easy to use uh then this slight difference between despite and in spite of not in the usage only thing is despite is a little more formal than in spite of now we use linking words to join ideas together when we are talking or writing you know that right sometimes we want to link two ideas that are different from each other maybe one is a positive idea and one is a negative idea or we want to link one idea to other another one which is surprising or unexpected so in that in those cases in that context we use linking words these linking words though although even though in spite of despite okay now let us see the first example i'm giving you as usual so many examples so that you will understand it better example 1 she is 80 but she is fit as fiddle she say it she is old so what do you expect actually you expect that oh she must be tired she is weak but it's not like that she is fit as a fiddle fit as a fiddle means to be fit as a fiddle means be in perfect health oh lucky right yes maybe her food habits good thoughts all that would have contributed right yes so here she is 80 but she is fit as a fiddle here but is used the coordinating conjunction but is used now we have to use though we have here we have to use though although even though in spite of despite let's see the difference see when we are using but we can use it only in the second part of the sentence right we cannot we cannot write a sentence like this it is but she is fit as a fiddle she is 80 we cannot write like that it is wrong but when we are using though although etc there is flexibility in the usage you can rearrange the clauses right in all these things but but cannot be used in the beginning let's see how to use it though she is 80 she is fit as a fiddle here we are using though in the beginning and then she is 80 comma she is fit as a fiddle okay so though she is 80 so so a clause together it is called as subordinate 
clause and after that you have to put a comma because we are using the subordinating clause in the beginning. So you have to put a comma after that. Then you have to write the main clause that is she is fit as a fiddle. Now the flexibility here is you can use though she is 80 later also she is fit as a fiddle though she is 80 but here remember you don't have to put a comma. I hope you understood it. Now I'm not uh, using although even though here you can definitely use it in writing but it's not wrong only thing is though is more appropriate here that's all but definitely you can use although and even though it is not wrong right you will get marks then in spite of being 80 comma she's fit as a fiddle here in spite of after that you are using in spite of plus ing form of the verb which is the verb here this is the verb and this is the form of be so what is the present participle form being in spite of being a t she is fit as a fiddle again you are putting comma here remember that after this prepositional phrase comma is used here then you can also interchange this this she is fit as a fiddle in spite of being 80. You can rearrange it like this also. Okay. But if you are asked a question, begin with in spite of, then you should use, you should begin with in spite of. All right. Then how to use despite? Despite being 80, comma, she is fit as a fiddle. You can definitely use it later also. That is, she is fit as a fiddle, fiddle despite being 80. Now see, after despite being 80, the prepositional phrase, you are putting a comma here. Clear? Then she is fit as a fiddle. Now same like in spite of. Only thing is, mostly you commit this error that is despite of. But it is wrong. You should not use it. Okay? Despite being 80, that is enough. I hope you understood this. Let's go to the next example. I have taken this from 2009 board paper, English language board paper. Let's read the question. He arrived in school on time even though he stopped for a bite on the way. Use in spite of in place of even though. All right. Now here, he arrived in school on time. That's what happened. So what do you think? What do you expect? You think that, oh, he had started early from house. But it's not like that. It's just the opposite. He, even though he stopped, he stopped for a bite on the way. So expected result is um, he would arrive in school late. But it's not. That's not happened it does not happen like that he arrived in school on time even though he stopped for a bite on the way okay now how to write it he arrived in school on time in spite of stopping for a bite on the way here the verb is stop you are using ing form of stop in spite of stopping you can write like this also, in spite of stopping for a bite on the way, comma, he arrived in school on time. Now, how to use although or though? Although he stopped for a bite on the way, comma, he arrived in school on time. Now, let us see how to use despite, just like in spite of. Despite stopping for a bite on the way, comma, he arrived in school on time. It is ing form of stop. Just like in spite of. I hope you understood the example also. Let's go to example 3. This is related to weather. It was very hot, comma, but we had fun walking in the nature reserve. Hmm? Here but is used. You have to replace it with the linking words of contrast. I'm using although here. Although it was very hot, comma, we had fun walking in the nature reserve. Now, you can write like this also. We had fun walking in the nature reserve. 
although it was very hot. Now let's see how to use in spite of and despite. Here this is related to weather. Okay. In spite of it being very hot, comma, we had fun walking in the nature reserve. So you know that here the verb is was and you are using was as a form of be and the present participle form is being. And here it is used as a gerund. And it should have a subject and it is the subject. In spite of it being very hot, comma, we had fun walking in the nature reserve. The weather was very hot, the day was very hot, but still we had fun walking in the nature reserve. Now in the same way, despite also, despite it being very hot, comma, we had fun walking in the nature reserve. Okay. So when, you're, when you have to replace it with in spite of and despite, you have to write like this. But usually while speaking, we don't use in spite of and despite. In writing we use, we can just say though it was very hot, we had fun walking in the nature reserve. I hope you understood it. Yes. Now example four. We practiced all the week, but we lost the game. Yes. I'm not using though, although, even though here. Uh, anyway, you know that it is simple. I will just tell you, though we practiced all the way, comma, we lost the game. Yes. In spite of the fact that we practiced all the way, comma, we lost the game. So we have an option to use like this. In spite of the fact that, okay, that's also accepted. In spite of the fact that we practiced all the week, we lost the game. You have to put a comma here. Same manner, despite also. Despite the fact that we practiced all the week, comma, we lost the game. I hope you understood this. Yes. Example 5. She was very ill. She did not take any medicines. Usually, look at the way she's looking at the medicine. She doesn't like to take medicines. Okay, usually when somebody is ill, they are supposed to take medicines. But just the opposite. She's not, she did not take any medicines. So, how to use though? Though she was very ill, comma, she did not take any medicines. Okay. <clears throat> now, how to use in spite of? In spite of being very ill, she did not take any medicines. Being is again the ing form of be because the verb here used here, the verb used here is was. Despite being very ill, comma, she did not take any medicines. Now let us go to exa example six. With all his wealth, comma, he is not happy. Yes, look at the way he is looking at. He has got a lot of wealth. But what's the use? No happiness. But so we can understand that happiness doesn't come from wealth or any other things. Happiness lies inside. Okay. Although he is wealthy, comma, he is not happy. So we can use though also here. Though he is wealthy, comma, he is not happy. Now, in spite of being wealthy, comma, he is not happy. In spite of being wealthy, he is not happy. Okay. Or despite being wealthy, comma, he is not happy. I hope you understood it. Simple exercise. Example. Example 7. In spite of the storm, comma, all the trawlers returned safely. Now, what's the meaning of trawler? It means a fishing boat that uses a trawl net or drag net to catch fish. You can see the picture of a trawler here. Yes. How to use despite? Despite the storm, comma, all the trawlers returned safely. These kinds of sentences you can see in newspapers. All right. Let's go to the next one. Example 8. Although it was sun, it was a sunny day, it was very cold. It happens in cold countries, right? Yes. 
Now, despite despite being a sunny day, comma it was very cold. So again, was and be. Okay. In spite of being a sunny day, comma it was very cold. I hope you understood it. Simple example. Next one. It's slightly different. The tense is different. Here it is. Uh, past perfect tense. Milner had practiced hard for many days. So, what do you expect? You expect that she would perform well in the competition. But just the opposite happened. She didn't perform well in the competition. Oh, I have written S in lower case. It's actually upper case. Okay. Milna had practiced hard for many days. Now, though Milna had practiced hard for many days, comma, she didn't perform well in the competition. Unexpected shock, right? In spite of having practiced hard for many days, comma, Milna didn't perform well in the competition. So, we are using having practiced. Okay? I hope you understood because the tense here is Past perfect and in spite of having practiced hard for many years, many days, comma, Milna didn't perform well in the competition because the base verb is have and the uh, present participle is having, having practiced hard for many days. It is not present continuous, it is present participle. Understand that. Okay. I hope you understood this also. Now, example 10. This is a slightly formal one. That's why I've used even though here. But of course, you can use though and although in writing. That, uh, it's not wrong. It's even though police repeatedly announced to keep social distancing, comma, people kept moving around carelessly. You know that is what is happening that what that is that has been happening for quite a long period right okay now how to use the despite here despite repeated announcements by the police to keep social distancing comma people kept moving around carelessly it's a little lengthy sentence but just for your understanding i have given this sentence okay yes in spite of repeated announcements hmm, by the police to keep social distancing, comma, people kept moving around carelessly. Yes, I hope you understood this. Yes, you can definitely, I will just mention that police repeatedly announced to keep social distancing, comma, however, People kept moving around carelessly. That would be a best sentence when we are writing. Okay, because we can cut short the sentence. Shorten the sentence to make it more effective. Okay, now example 11. Though the weather was bad, comma, a huge crowd came to see the match. Yes. In spite of the weather being bad, okay, in spite of the weather being bad, comma, a huge crowd came to see the match. Same manner despite also. Despite the weather being bad, comma, a huge crowd came to see the match. Okay, maybe it is raining heavily, but people stood and watched the game. Okay, maybe in a playground in your local area. Yes. Now, I hope you understood these. Clear? All right, students. I hope you understood the usage of though, although, even though, in spite of and despite. Okay? Yes. Now let us move to the next 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 part that is the usage of either or or neither nor. First of all, understand the pronunciation. The pronunciation is you can pronounce either or either, 
or neither or neither both are correct depending upon your liking you can call it either or either or neither or neither i hope you understood it and understand that either always goes in company combination with or and neither always goes in combination with nor all right now on one more thing either or is used in a sentence in the affirmative sense when referring to a choice between two possibilities okay uh, uh, see look at the uh, look at the situation you are given a project by your teacher by the school but you don't know when you have to submit the project so you think you say that i don't know when i have to submit my project you are telling this to your parents then you tell that you have two friends anil and rakesh so i should either ask anil or rakesh so you have two choices here either anil or rakesh both of them are nouns okay choice one is anil choice two is rakesh you can change the choices also rakesh and anil okay so how do you write it how do you say that i should either ask anil or rakesh clear yes now you rang up to both of them okay so you are telling your parents i rang up to both of them but both of them don't don't know about it anil doesn't know about it rakesh also doesn't know about the date of submission okay so how do you write it how do you use here you can use neither that is neither is used in a sentence in a negative sense when you want to say that two or more things are not true at all you can't you have no options here neither anil nor rakesh knows about it okay now here i want you to note this point that is rakesh rakesh is the closest subject to the verb so that is why as the verb agrees with the closest subject always okay in neither nor or either or okay so rakesh knows about it neither anil nor rakesh knows about it i hope you understood it okay now you are thinking how can i get the information yes. so let's look at example 3 you have only two options here okay i should get my teacher's number so that if you call the teacher you will get the you will definitely get the date of submission you know the date of submission or what you should do i should go to the school to find it okay you can ask in the office because the date is written there okay you can go and check that so how can you write it i should either get my teacher's number or go to the school to find it i hope you understood it clear all right now let's go to next example example 4 my let's focus more on either or here from here onwards my parents have to go to the party tonight the so, so the uh, situation is like this that is a context is this my brother has to go to the party tonight so there is a discussion in your house and uh, your family think that your father parents should go otherwise your brother can go for the party one of them should go definitely so how will you write it there's a choice whether your parents or your brother so when you write when you use either or your either my brother my parents or my brother has to go to the party tonight maybe it's a very important maybe your close relatives party okay so either my brother or my bro or either my parents or my brother has to go to the party tonight so here the closest subject is brother singular so the verb is also singular has and it is in present tense now if you are using either my brother in the beginning either my brother or my parents have to go to the party tonight then the verb should agree with parents the subject so here it is plural so the verb also should be plural 
I hope you understood this. Clear? Yes. Now, let's go to example five. You have saved some money. And you have two choices here. One is you want to buy. You can buy a bike for your brother. Or the next choice is donate the money to the old age home. All right. So how do you use either or here? I will use the saved money either to buy a bike for my brother or donate it to the old age home. So you are just pondering over this. What I should do with this saved money? Okay. You have choices here. I hope you understood this. <coughs> yes. Next one. Example six. Here. Let's see how to use neither nor. These books don't have information about this topic. That is, you want some information about a particular topic and you are going through uh, some books and also you checked on Google. But you see that there is no information at all about this topic, both in books, both in the books which you have and the Google. And you know that some of the information you will not get from any book or from Google. You will get only from a learned person. Okay. So this is a lesson for you. Yes. In between neither nor lesson. Okay. Let's see how to use neither nor here. Neither these books nor Google has information about this topic. Now here Google is closest to, that is the noun Google is closest to the verb. And so the verb agrees with the closest subject. That is here it is singular. So you have to use has. Now neither, if you are writing like this, neither Google nor these books have information about this topic. Because books is plural. So the web, verb agrees with the plural. Verb is also plural. Okay. So subject verb agreement is a very important matter and it is considered as a very major error. Okay. Yes, we, uh, subject verb agreement. Subject should agree with the verb. Yes. Now let's go to example 7. I've taken this from 2008 paper. Her mother warned her not to talk to strangers. She told her not to accept gifts from people she didn't know. I hope all of I'm sure all your mothers would be warning this, right? Yes. So how to use neither nor here? Her mother warned her neither to talk to strangers nor to accept gifts from the pe from people she did not know. This is also very simple. I hope you understood the usage. All right. So today... We have discussed the usage of linking words of contrast. That is, though, although, even though, in spite of, despite. Also, we discussed the usage of either or and neither nor in sentences. Uh, this was a very simple lesson. I hope you understood their usage correctly. You can use it correctly, I hope. I am giving you exercises based on this lesson that is assignment 13 and I am attaching assignment 12 uh, answers also that is uh, based on not only but also as well as besides. Okay, let us also end today's lesson with some good thoughts. These are some quotes on time. I hope. And I wish all value time because time is a great miser and you will not get the time back. Okay. Time and tide wait for no man. Geoff Geoffrey Chaucer's quote. An inch of time is an inch of gold. But you can't buy that inch of time with an inch of gold. It is a Chinese proverb. And time is free. No, whatever we get free, sometimes we take it for granted, isn't it? But we should never do that because 
you know when you whatever you get free remember that it is priceless time is free but it is priceless see you get parents love but it is priceless all right knowledge you are getting knowledge you are getting and it is priceless you cannot give any price for your parents love the knowledge you are getting everything okay you can own it you can own the time but you can use it you can keep time but you can spend it once you have lost you can never get it back so, so children let us end with a very beautiful thought that is never waste time utilize every moment every moment every second is a gift of god so utilize it to gain as much knowledge as possible to become better human beings yes okay children all the best have a good time and i hope you have enjoyed the lesson take care and do the exercises don't waste time thank you